Black Desert Online, the MMORPG in which every system has a system that if it can be monetized, it will. It's affordable to buy, yet expensive to play. It's gorgeous, with breathtaking visuals and rapturous music. The combat is fast-paced, fighter-esque, with silky smooth animation. It's currently $3 on Steam or its website, sitting with nearly 40,000 mostly positive reviews. It touts a wide open world, robust character customization, intense action combat, expansive life skills, and content to play with your friends. There's so much to love and so much more to pay for. So let's see if Black Desert Online is fun. Once you start, you will see on the right hand side a list of servers. Some of them are special, like the one I'll join now. It's a season server, which is essentially a catch up shard that enables casual or returning players like me the ability to quickly play content, otherwise inaccessible. On the right hand side, you will see your characters. You can see that I have some playtime in Black Desert Online, so if you want more BDO content, please let me know. Since I want to try the newly rebooted Ranger, I select her. For the uninitiated, Black Desert Online recently redid all of their vanilla classes, including a cosmetic makeover, all for free. I wish other MMOs freshened up their older classes too. The character creation system is complex, robust, and impressive. Moreover, there is a beauty album that you can access to use someone else's customization for yourself. Other MMOs should adopt this practice because it creates its own type of microeconomy of artistic composition while also enabling the community at large to utilize their complex creation tools. You can edit almost every detail of your character. Nothing here is locked behind a paywall and all classes are free. But when will the monetization Hydra rear its many heads? The looks module previews what your character would look like wearing certain outfits. Unfortunately, many of these costumes are most easily obtained via the cash shop for which Black Desert Online is infamously known. We'll discuss the cash shop in more detail later, yet note that visual progression in Black Desert Online is a mixed bag, unless you either get lucky to purchase one from the auction house or buy the best looking gear using cash. But you'll see later in the video what visual progression looks like without using the cash shop because I haven't spent a single penny on Black Desert Online ever. Regardless, I finish my character and begin playing. In a moment, you'll experience Black Desert Online's cinematic movie that should explain why your character begins where they do while suggesting motivation to continue playing. You should know that Black Desert Online has changed this opening cinematic over the years, so this may be new to you. We'll explore its themes in a moment, yet for now, let's watch. These are the memories of the Forgotten World. Sorry, but you should have known better. The cinematic leaves many questions unanswered, which on the surface I appreciate, yet I think they're the wrong questions, at least at this point in the storytelling. We don't know who this lady is, and you'll see whether or not she's relevant soon by the end of the video, and the unimportant storytelling becomes a narratological problem you'll see soon. 10 seconds after I enter the game world, I am flooded with notifications, gifts, pop-ups, and gimmicks vying for my attention. The first I get out of the way is an in-game board game that rewards players at 30 minute intervals. It's always worth doing since you tend to earn a few million gold in value for a few seconds of your time. Yet as I've published elsewhere, I'd so much rather that the game be so rewarding by itself that you don't feel the need to have to simply throw money at the player. Do you think this type of reward system ruins MMOs? Let me know in the comments. The next screen is the season pass. That is essentially quests unique to the season shard for various accomplishments. Of course, it's monetized. So if you want to catch up even more quickly, you can purchase a pass. I don't, although you're free to, presuming that you think the value is commensurate with the asking price. The next screen is another layer of rewards for either locking in or obtaining some degree of proficiency in the game. Some of them are timed, so every 30 minutes you can receive another. This encourages longer playtime, even keeping on your computer overnight. I won't judge how people play their games, yet I find this type of psychological FOMO distasteful. I'd rather the game reward players who actively earn their power or wealth through gameplay than a functionally encouraged in-game bot. I've been in the game world for less than five minutes. I haven't slayed a single creature, and my brand new character is already worth millions of gold. This setup is certainly more useful to veteran players who know how to use the currency to expedite the catch-up process, yet to a newbie, this is both overwhelming and telling me that your game is grossly inflated by your own design. If you're feeling confused or overwhelmed, you're in good company, because as of 3,358 hours, this veteran still does not know what he or she is doing. 
I clicked the black spirit button and were again greeted with strange text about our whereabouts. None of it is important. However, this UI is one of the most pivotal screens you'll see in Black Desert Online. It's the nexus between your quest progression, gear upgrades, and more. Learn it thoroughly, because if you don't, you'll miss out on major systems. You see icons for enchantment and upgrading, which, over the course of the game's development, have become more forgiving, yet at 19,527 hours, this veteran explains that. All the nice things that this game does is overshadowed by how terrible the RNG-based enchantment system is and the sheer amount of time you will have to grind just to attempt to upgrade your gear in the in-game. After closing the menu, the introductory quest automatically starts with a lovely animation pulling your eye to the relevant details. A beam of light is displayed on the NPC with whom we need to chat. I have mixed feelings about giving the player so much information that the puzzle effect is lost. You'll soon see whether or not the questing improves. You talk to Eden, he suggests we examine an ancient artifact. Since I've played through earlier and different versions of this quest, my muscle memory kicked into gear and I had to run back up the hill. The goblin provides some interesting details about the artifact, yet it becomes increasingly confusing. You're directed to speak to Jared, who notices you're not a skilled excavator, yet to make yourself useful, you can kill nearby foxes that have been stealing supplies. Upon walking down the hill, there is no indication that the foxes are or have stolen any supplies, nor are they even dangerous. They hardly appear to be moving. I'm going to warn you right now. Ultimately, this is standard Black Desert online combat. Sure, it isn't flashy yet. Sure, mob variations aren't present yet. Sure, you're not a demigod yet. But mowing through groups of mobs without much concern to their danger to you is 99% percent of the pve content the other one percent is dynamic and as difficult as you'd like to stomach yet if your enjoyment of a game is based on how efficiently you can level this basic difficulty is what you'll be experiencing for the majority of your pve lifespan in black desert online this quest is simply a mask to introduce players to combat Fighting is unique in that you can memorize keyboard combinations to trigger abilities while some can be placed in an optional hotbar. You travel to a guard who lets you into the excavation on the promise of no silly behavior inside. To him, nothing important has been located, yet you'll soon see if he's right. You may have noticed that if you brush up against an NPC, your character staggers. I love those little details that Black Desert Online gets absolutely right about how your character interacts with the environment. You run through this corridor that is both a showcase for the very impressive and immersive lighting engine employed by BDO, while also emphasizing another accessibility feature, the arrow showing both direction and distance to your new quest objective. There's a little icon next to it, which presumably means it's a Black Spirit quest, yet veterans of BDO can clarify this point in the comments. You find Adon again inside the chamber and gives you the Book of Secret to personally investigate. This feels entirely out of place because why would an excavation manager give a random adventure with amnesia a culturally sensitive artifact with an exegetical objective? The Black Spirit directs you to examine the ancient artifact that's both old and familiar, yet again it's hard to know if that statement is true to your character, the Black Spirit, or both. Another cutscene appears. Let's watch. <laughs> この Let me break down that confusing cinematic. The archer notices that you are influenced by a black spirit. The gentleman refers to an awakening that hasn't yet happened, and this is a foreshadowing of an excellent character advancement opportunity later. You're then confronted with two points of view, theirs and the black spirits. The latter combines its identity with yours, which partially explains the obfuscation earlier. The spirit occupies the orb, activates it, then claims it has obtained power. It's at this time that the man suggests that the black spirit may have consumed your memory too. 
but how would we have known that? You speak to a Don again, who is mysteriously less aggressive in your task with earning rapport with a local military captain. As I was killing wolves, I must have accidentally slayed a tree spirit. As a result, my character earned knowledge. In theory, I like this system. There are grades to one's knowledge of each particular mob type. It can be upgraded automatically the more you fight. If you have no knowledge of a mob, you can't even see their remaining HP. If you have the highest grade, you receive PvE bonuses against them. Of course, this system can also be monetized. More on that later. You'll notice that I've been given a speed boost. While I do appreciate the developer's insistence that players are quickly escorted to a new play area, it also conveys that the traversal of the game space can effectively be skipped. If that's so, why design an open world? It is additionally an indicator of various speed boosts available later. The main one being mounts, which to cover properly would require a video on its own. When I reach level 10, the UI automatically pops open the season reward screen to remind me that I have earned a reward. Thank you. But of course, it's also a reminder that I could have earned more had I purchased a pass. This is becoming a theme. For example, while continuing to slay imps, as Adon implied earlier, I bring up a list of pets that my other characters have earned through gameplay. Note, I have not spent a single penny on a cash shop. This system can be enhanced greatly through monetization. Pets are important because they confer increased stats and help you parse visual information, yet they also function as an auto loot mechanic. The quicker your pets loot, the more money you earn per hour. This observation interacts with paid to win concerns as illustrated by the words of a 2096 hour veteran. I don't mind grinding. I don't mind people who are more dedicated than me, but this is Archage all over again. A 300 hour credit card warrior can easily outgear a 9,000 hour hardcore non paying player. Just know what you're getting into if you plan on being competitive without forking over money. I've repeatedly hinted at BDO's payment model, so let's discuss it. If you approve of their monetization system, please let me know why. I value different opinions for my own, and perhaps you know or have experienced something that I haven't. Do not click the cash shop button. It is like opening Facebook, Instagram, or any other social media platform, as you will see everything you could have, although you don't. Right now, you can buy the entire game for $3. That's easily worth it. In fact, at 4,118 hours, this veteran agrees that the entry price is worth it. If you look at the amount of time and entertainment you get for the price, it's worth it. However, it's a cost leader, which means that they have to make up the money elsewhere. The game throws loot at you until you can't hold it anymore, so you have to buy backspace. The game throws money at you until you can no longer walk, so you have to buy a weight limit increase. You start to perform worse and worse in PvE, so you upgrade your gear, but it breaks, so you buy a special item that makes the process Process more seamless. Purchased a horse, but it doesn't have the right skills? Buy a reset token. This is all in addition to the several technically optional yet functionally required subscriptions. Yes, plural. Black Desert Online sells, which increase the rate at which you gain experience and items. Veteran Black Desert Online players can correct my understanding, so please look in the comments for updated information. After slaying those imps, I'm tasked to kill other imps. Inspiring quests. However, what I absolutely love about Black Desert Online's PvE is that mob placements are justified. In most contexts, you're fighting through expansive camps, a bonafide city, or an actual siege. In this case, we're an assault force in their home territory. The moonlight dancing off the rocks with the stars glistening in the sky layer a strangely romantic emotion to this military operation. This is only the beginning of Black Desert Online's absolutely gorgeous world. Finally, I summon an imp boss. More on this in a second, yet let's watch its video. Just as the cutscene finished, a new set of login rewards superseded whatever else I was doing, which not only completely shattered the emotional gravity of the moment, yet it could have also been dangerous. Up until this point, I'm not sure that I had been even damaged a single hit point, although fighting the boss, I was brought down to nearly half health. While the game poorly communicates the point of this battle, it is trying to teach you that every mob type in the game can drop boss scrolls. That are mid-game activities for adventurers to enjoy. Most players hoard scrolls and then use them repeatedly to quickly collect the loot. Boss battles are very fun if you're undergeared because it rewards careful and thoughtful fighting. I wish more of Black Desert Online was like this. As a quest reward, I'm given additional inventory space. I far rather prefer inventory to be an in-game progression system that interacts with crafting than a function of how much of the main quest you've completed that also, as you may have guessed, is also monetized. You'll also see that I equip a green outlined bow. Similar to other RPGs, gear comes in tiers 
and families, although the system is vastly more nuanced than that. As I run to Lagia Farm, let me explain. One element that I absolutely love about Black Desert Online's equipment is that the gear is not level restricted. Generally speaking, unless it is for another class or for a particular shard and you own the item, you can equip it. That means you can truly twink your characters. Various tiers are associated with various statistical ranges, yet families of gear are associated with different statistics. What I mean is that some families of gear may emphasize accuracy, whereas others provide additional critical chance, somewhat akin to Guild Wars 2's itemization, although a bit less cumbersome. Ultimately, I think Black Desert Online's equipment system is superb because it balances accessibility with advanced build crafting. As I run down to the first main town, you can see behind me a large stone eagle surrounded by many tents. These are high level characters farming a particular boss and I absolutely love when games overlap level ranges because it foreshadows to new players what in-game activities are available and how their tunes may visually progress. The tents, by the way, are a heavily monetized feature, yet I believe you can earn a free one in-game after level 50, although its utility is less robust than premium ones. I'm now in Velia. What is absolutely superb about my time here is that I discovered that BDO now offers players a simplified quest experience in which you can skip the hundreds of go here, kill that, or talk to this guy requirement. By selecting the simplified version, you can bypass that horrible grind of mind-numbing boredom and level as you see fit. I love this, and I was honestly surprised and elated they added this feature. Towns are hubs of player activities. You can train AFK like in Conqueror Online, although I think that's a cash shop add-on. Sail off in player-made boats, use the auction house, stable horses, hire workers, decorate your residence, and more. Each of these could use an entire video or video series explaining their nuances. I speak to a skill trainer, which reminds me to spend skill points. Your character level is independent from your skillfulness, so you need to balance them accordingly. Skill upgrades cost points, which become exponentially harder to earn. I typically have more skills needing to be upgraded than I have points for. There are refunds available, should you need them. You eventually can add additional effects to skills, such as life skill, adding a DOT, slowing, etc. Last yet not least, you eventually will learn a whole new array of skills, which we'll later discuss in the video. Let's skip ahead to demonstrate how important upgrading your gear is. Unlike conventional MMOs in which you loot higher level gear, in BDO you loot upgrade components that improve the stats of your equipment. Before, I was using plus zero item, yet here I upgrade my weapon to plus 10. I went from gravely struggling to defeat the Foggins to summoning Ragnarok upon them. Do not make my mistake by forgetting to upgrade your equipment. The first plus 15 are reasonably simple to achieve, which will take you through level 50. Beware! Upgrading past plus 15 becomes very expensive, time consuming, and frustrating. In a way, the in game of BDO is an inverted form of the season shard since progression can feel like it's in the negative, and to progress, you feel ever more the pressure to spend more money. But know that you can enjoy Black Desert Online without paying any more than the cost of the game, like me. Combat opens up for the Ranger after level 40. Here, I'm level 50, which ends the newbie experience. This level range used to be the old in game. You have more skills available, typically, denser mob packs to fight, and in certain areas there are wandering uber creatures that can two hit you that are fun to fight around. The ranger is a mid to close range combatant that must control the battlefield in order to dish out damage. It becomes very fun, yet is slow to start. At level 56, you can either awaken, which is a callback to the statement made in the excavation site, or complete your succession. The first option transforms your character into a new prestige class with an array of various abilities and a new weapon. The latcher supercharges your current ability set while adding new ones. The choice is yours, and neither are locked behind a paywall. With that said, remember the lady with the flowing attire in the opening cinematic? She has yet to make another appearance within the simplified quest line from level 1 to 50. Thus, while the world building, character development, graphics, and soundtrack of Black Desert Online are top notch, story writing isn't one of them. Is Black Desert Online fun? In the words of a fellow player of 8,050 hours, Yes. Anything you ask about this game is yes. Is it bad? Yes. Is it pay to win? Yes. Can I not pay? Yes. Will I waste hatefully 5,000 hours on this game? Yes. Will I enjoy it? Yes. Am I stupid? Yes. Thanks for watching.